some of the special mission unit guys came to us uh, and said, hey, we, we identified that we have a problem. Nobody else wants to take a shot at fixing it. What do you think? We jumped on immediately and said, yes, we'll, we'll throw the assets at it and we'll, we'll do the work to make it better. The primary purpose of the ExoShield um, was to provide a very low profile, lightweight, easy to use goggle for tactical missions. Some of the high speed mobility type missions these guys operate in, whether it be sitting on the skid of a helicopter, whether it be fast roping in, or whether it be jumping out of an aircraft in flight, all required something close to the face easy fitting. You know, typical goggle like our Desert Locust um, stands off the face when you put your night vision device in front of your eyes you, you don't get the same field of view as you would when you've got it right up against your eye or you know in this case very close to the eye with the exoshield. A lot of guys were wearing a non-ballistic eyewear because they wanted something very close to the face. They wanted something that could get it closer. If you're using night optical devices you want something that's very close so that it doesn't pipe stem so it can actually pull the device up closer to the eye. It's traditionally called pupillary distance. If I can keep my pupillary distance very low, I'm looking through the device and, and maximizing its effectiveness. So the challenge here was to produce something that was lightweight, easy to use, um, but offered a level of ballistic protection that was on par with what we have with a soft fly. The ExoShield from the first iteration of the first conversation, which literally took place then in a trade show booth, to the first prototypes was probably less than a week to two weeks getting prototypes back into the hands of the same requesters. And using our, our soft light lens, we had a good base to work with. Um, you know, the challenges were how do you get the face seal with that lens and how do you get it to work every single time? This was the early generation. Well, we sent them out, we gave them to guys, we said, hey, do your worst. What can you do to break it and how can you, how could we make it better? Tell us what the flaws are. As we went through various iterations, we were working with uh, the sales group and they were working with end users and then we're getting feedback uh, as we iterated and as we tried different foams and different lens cuts and, and literally different straps on the unit so that would, we had different ways they could figure this uh, with their equipment. The feedback came back that they wanted some changes. Well, we've adapted it and here's, here's a much more polished and and pretty unfinished product that actually is in use today with a lot of the special operation forces throughout the world. It's a very quick, fast-paced product. And if you look at all the things that have to take place and the timelines that uh, have to match up to be able to do that, that's just, it's unparalleled in this industry.